Hi and welcome to this video log with me, Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com. Well, as we approach the end of the year, I'm going to bring you a drill that I think's overlooked, and you've probably overlooked it the whole year. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about doggy paddle. Yeah, you heard it right. Doggy paddle to aid your front crawl. Doggy paddle will do that because you eliminate the overarm section, the recovery section, where a lot of faults occur especially in triathletes when they're doing front crawl. Eliminate that and you can concentrate on holding the water, driving it through and then rotating the hips out the way. Don't take my word for it, we'll see some examples on the computer then we'll come back and have a little chat. The key to doing doggy paddle successfully is to try to maximise the distance you can get from every single stroke. Let's just look at the swimmer on the left here. And you can see we've got the rotation as the hand goes back and he's trying to grab the water as far out in front of him as he possibly can and that's what we like to see. So just to be clear we're trying to reach out as far as we can and then grab the water with our forearm and hand so we present the water with a huge catch area like that. From that position we drive backwards underneath the body and as our hand approaches the hip you can see that the swimmer has to rotate out of its way to complete that stroke and you saw that rotation of the hip come that way um, and we'll see the other arm again trying to grab the water as far out as possible and as the hand comes underneath the body and pushes backwards and it's accelerating all the time that hip has to whip out the way this time the other way to get out the way of the hand so it can finish its stroke. Effectively with doggy paddle what we're trying to do is get people to think about the most effective way to use their arms and one of the ways is to eliminate the legs with, by using a pull boy and that's what we're doing here. And you can see we have different swimmers doing different things and the swimmer on the right actually has a more efficient stroke than the swimmer on the left. You can see that arm grabbing the water out front there, beautifully curved arm which grabs the water and holds it with the forearm and the hand and then drives back and accelerates and rotates those hips out the way. And you can see with the other arm exactly the same, holds the water, drives back and accelerates beyond the hip and rotates the hip out the way. Okay, so doggy paddle can really help with front crawl because you're effectively doing front crawl without the overarm bit, without the recovery. We're recovering under the water. But let's go over a few of the main points again. You want to extend as far as you can and if you need to breathe, it tends to be best if you breathe in the normal way you do in front crawl. And the reason for that is, you can see this here, this hand is just finishing its stroke when the swimmer is breathing and that's exactly where you want to breathe in front crawl because you will remain as flat in the water as this, as this swimmer is there. So you extend your arm as far as you can and then you curve your arm into the catch position to try and grab as much of the water as you can as far out in front of you as you can. Once you've done that you drive that arm through and rotate the hips away from that arm, allowing that hand to complete its stroke. And we'll see the other arm, you can see he's grabbing the water, slightly pulled that elbow back but we've still got a lot of the forearm grabbing the water as well as the hand. Then that hand drives back. Now we don't need to drop that elbow there so much, we want to push it through. That elbow overtakes the wrist and if you can you want to keep that elbow level with the wrist so that that remains in line as it pushes back but here the swimmer does tuck that elbow in a bit too quickly but the drive back is exceptionally good and you can see that hip get out the way and the stroke finishes effectively right by the thigh and that's exactly what you need to do in front crawl as well as doggy paddle. So there you have it, doggy paddle as a form of front crawl training. And I think that really works. If you look at that, if you look at the examples we gave, um, front crawl really can assist you 
in feeling the water, holding the water, and accelerating that arm through underneath the body while rotating those hips out the way to finish the stroke. And that's exactly what you need in front crawl. So I think it's very much overlooked. And when it's overlooked, you're missing a part of the drill that can actually use, be useful for you. Okay, it's Christmas. Have a wonderful time. Season's greetings to you all. I'm going out to Cape Verde next week for Boxing Day, so I'm going to do some filming out there. Enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your New Year, see you shortly. Keep up.